My mother, my sister, and I had had a day out a few cities over, so we were all generally in a good mood as we walked by some vandalized buildings to get back to the car. I think I may have been the one to spot him first. As far as I can remember, he was the only other person around aside from our group. He was dressed for the weather in shorts and a short-sleeved shirt and appeared normal, but after he caught sight of us, he almost immediately changed his trajectory towards us. I felt my mother stiffen slightly from where she stood beside me as he approached. Even if the memory wasn't slightly foggy from the passage of time, I still wouldn't be able to make out all the things he said. As far as I could tell, he was shouting something about God at my mother before he demanded to know if those girls were Catholics. My mother pushed us away from him slightly and stuttered out a response, clearly blindsided by the random question. My sister looked confused but stayed silent and I took the opportunity to move slightly to the side so that there was more distance between me and this random guy who had shouted about God in my mother's face. The guy then shoved a small package into my sister's and mother's hands while ignoring me completely. He shouted something like, that's the word of God on those leaflets there. You better read them or I'll kill you both. At that point I was considering decking him in the face or something because he had shoved his own face way too close to my sister's to be any sort of comfortable. But my mother pushed her even further back while she hastily voiced her agreement. Seemingly satisfied, the man walked off, but not before shouting more random things in my mother's face. She just nodded and agreed with whatever he was saying, and as soon as he was out of sight, she placed a hand on both of our backs and hurried us along. I remember thinking at the time that the things he had given them were clearly not leaflets, and I was proven right when my mother stopped walking after we were a good distance away and opened hers. She recoiled and abandoned it and got my sister to do the same. My mother thought it was tobacco, but my sister said it looked more like pubic hair. For being screamed at in her face by a random guy, she was rather nonplussed about the entire thing. As we were leaving in the car, our mother caught sight of the same guy having an argument with another man. My sister and I both looked and got to bear witness as he climbed on top of a car and started stripping. Needless to say, we didn't stay long after that. When I was in 6th grade, there was this girl at school. I'll call her Nellie. She was the popular girl and had a million friends and tons of boys that liked her. There was something about her that just wasn't right. She had this weird influence over everyone, including the adults and teachers. She was way too aware for her age and knew how to get around things and manipulate people that were way older than her. She seemed to know how to legitimately read minds as well. I remember once thinking a specific thought while walking close to her and she responded aloud to what I was thinking as if I had actually said something. I know for a fact I didn't. I remember I was so shocked I just stood there in awe not knowing what to say. She definitely had some strange psychic abilities and could force people to do things against their will just by thinking about it. She had the most amazing luck I've ever seen on anyone. She got whatever she wanted, no matter how unlikely, and she seemed to draw luck away from everyone else. All her close friends and people she spent time with had terrible issues. Two of her best friend's moms got cancer, one died, another broke her foot, and similar things happened to her other friends. For the brief time I was her friend, I had two infections, once in my eye after she complimented my new colored contacts, and one in my ear after she noticed my new earrings. I remember she was very beautiful, but her older brother was very unattractive and appeared almost to have stunted growth. They were close and spent a lot of time together. I remember one instance where she got something she wanted that was very improbable. A speaker came to our school and was going to give away a special prize to one of the 3,000 kids at our school. We were all in the library waiting to hear who would win. I was watching Nellie and I saw her with this weird expression on her face like she was concentrating really hard. Immediately, the speaker drew a name from a hat, and he called her name. She had won. She didn't even look surprised when she went to collect her prize. It was very creepy and unnerving. She had this weird effect on people, where even if you didn't like her, you wanted to do anything for her. I have never seen anything like it in my 17 years on this earth. I have met many popular girls, and none like her. I have not seen her in nearly 7 years. We were only 11 at the time, but she was like an adult in a child's body. She knew everything that would happen and knew exactly what to say in order to make you do something for her. 
She did not seem entirely human to me, almost like she was something else, masquerading as a middle schooler. She had a deep, almost adult voice, and she did not think like a child. I first met her in fourth grade, and even back then, she was so incredibly advanced that she had an entourage of friends, boyfriend, and other things that one doesn't normally have until middle school or high school. She knew things in fourth grade about psychology and human nature that I did not learn until recently. I have never seen someone so adept at controlling and manipulating people at such a young age. Does anyone else have similar experiences with people who don't seem totally human? This all just happened only yesterday, so I'm talking about it now while the memory is still fresh. Please help us figure this out so we can forget about it. I'll try to keep this all as short as possible, but I need to make sure you get all the details so you can help us figure this mess out. This is not your average My House is Haunted story, and I'm going to try to tell it to the best of my ability. Yesterday we planned on going on a four mile hike. The trail makes a big loop, with the beginning point also acting as the end point. The story begins in the trail parking lot. There were about five other cars in the lot, and out of the car nearest us came a middle aged couple. We paid them no mind as we typically do with strangers, and as we headed off to the restroom before hitting the trail, they set off on their own hike. When we started the hike, we chose route number one, doing the loop counterclockwise. The trail itself makes a huge loop about four miles in length, with the parking lot being at the highest elevation and the lowest point being the middle of the trail. The ascent from the bottom middle section to the top going either direction consists of giant limestone canyons that require a good bit of rock climbing making them extremely steep, slow, slippery, and tough. This is important information for later. About 20 minutes into our overall 3 hour hike, we reached point A, where we caught up with the older couple. About the same time we caught up to them in the canyon, they decided to turn back towards the parking lot, passing us along the way. We exchanged smiles and waves as we passed, and again thought nothing of it. From point A to point B, everything seemed totally normal. We were hot and tired of course, but were enjoying ourselves and thought very little about the other couple. When we reached point B about two thirds of the way through the loop, just starting the uphill climb back towards the parking lot, however things started to get a little weird. As soon as we exited the low lying canyon region, we saw the same couple heading towards us, as if they had returned to the parking lot and opted instead for route number two. We still didn't find this to be completely out of the ordinary as the first canyon around point A was tough to get down and it seemed they were somewhat unprepared. The woman was wearing a knee length skirt, a very bad choice for sliding down slippery canyon slopes and climbing steep rock bluffs, and it appeared that they had not brought a pack with water or anything. We passed them again, exchanged pleasantries and continued on. This time though, we did talk briefly about the situation. We found it odd that they made it far enough to meet us at this point as the first part of routes 1 and 2 were steep and slow, and the area between point A and B was pretty flat and steady. Considering the differences in terrain and their age, and the fact that the woman was wearing a knee length blue jean skirt with slipperish shoes, we agreed it was awfully strange to see them at that point on the trail, but we continued on anyway, just shrugging and thinking no more about it. Soon afterwards we made it to the outlook which was a couple hundred feet above the bottom section of the trail and 10 minutes past point B. As we paused to take some pictures and catch our breath, my wife pointed out she could hear their voices down below in the canyon as we rested. We listened and mutually agreed that it was probably the same couple since the point the voices seemed to come from would be about the right spot for them to be at given the last location we saw them at and the lack of anyone else on the trail so far. Still nothing too strange yet. That is, until we reached point C. Between the outlook and point C, which was 20 minutes from the end of the loop and 40 minutes from point B, was a wide gravel trail with steep drop offs on either side. You could say it was sort of a ridge, as everything within the loop made a giant bowl much like a volcano, with the elevation difference between the lowest point of the trail and the highest point of the trail being about 500 feet. This made the terrain around the trail seem pretty much impassable. It was extremely steep and covered in thick undergrowth and fallen trees. It seemed to be pretty much a given that the established trail is the only way to get from the outlook back to the parking lot. As we neared point C, we were becoming increasingly exhausted and ready to be done. 
We stopped once or twice for about 30 seconds apiece to catch our breath, and as we got closer and closer to point C, it was as if the energy was sucked out of us both. Of course, the trail was tough, but we had done it and many like it before, and it was not even 80 degrees out. Even as our mental focus began to waver, and we started noticing a significant change in our demeanor and attitude, we still marched on, knowing the end of the trail was near. When we reached point C, everything changed for the worse. Now, keep in mind, we saw the older couple about 40 minutes earlier at point B, and there was no way to reach point C from there except the trail we were currently on. There was no shortcuts, there was no realistic way to pass us without us knowing, and no way possible to beat us there. And yet, there they were, sitting on a bench on the side of the trail, calmly eating lunch at that. Even if they did find some way to get there before us, they didn't have a drop of sweat on them, and their demeanor did not at all fit the situation. They should have either not been there at all. As we passed them, the man mentioned something about a picnic to us and smiled, laughing. We tried our best to respond in kind, but the mood was as if we had just walked into a giant black cloud of smoke. I don't know how else to explain it, but the area around them disorientated us completely, and we no doubt were pale as ghosts and obviously shaken. We passed on by them, and as soon as we were out of earshot, my wife turned to me with a face I had never seen before in my life. We were terrified. Without saying a word to each other, we both experienced the same feeling of shock. It felt as if we had just walked through a time warp, or as if we brushed against another dimension. Our following discussion amounted to this. There is no way they could have beaten us there. Sure, maybe, possibly, just maybe there was a chance. But only if, after seeing us at point B, they sprinted through the woods in a direct line towards point C. Now this would require them to run up the second canyon, steep rock bluffs, through unmarked woods, and who knows what else for over a mile, in under 40 minutes. That's how long it took us to get there, going at a pretty good speed using the clear trail. Which, as the crow flies, was not that much longer than a direct route from point B to C. We are in our early 20s and in decent shape, and we were dead tired by the time we saw them, and based on their apparent level of preparedness and fitness, there is no way, even if they did take a direct off the trail route, they could have made it there before us. On top of that, they had somehow found two Bud Lights in a lunchbox full of sandwiches on the way, and were already almost done eating them by the time we met them at point C. All of these things combined with the overwhelming feeling we got when we encountered them at point C have left us in mental shambles for the past day. It took us 6-8 to eight hours to fully recover and regain our sense of normalcy. Shaken is an understatement, the hairs on our necks stood on end, and we felt almost ill. We have no idea what to make of this, and no clue how to explain it in a way that even begins to make sense. Please help us figure out what this was, or who they were.